Let's take a look at factoring trinomials. Recall, when you multiply two binomials, the result is a trinomial. Now by means two, tells us there's two terms in the polynomial, like this one, x and two. When it says the result's a trinomial, we're gonna be looking for something with three terms. So let's see what happens when we multiply these two binomials. If we use the FOIL rule to expand this, we're going to look at the first two terms, x times x, which gives us x squared. The O in FOIL stands for outside, so we're going to be looking at the two outside terms. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. The I in FOIL stands for inside, we're going to be looking at 2 times x. And the L in FOIL stands for last, so we'll be looking at the two last terms. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Now we always want to collect like terms and simplify. So I see two x's. If I simplify those, I have negative 4x plus 2x. This is like negative 4 oranges plus 2 oranges. It's going to give us negative 2x and minus 8. So here I've multiplied two binomials together and the result is a trinomial. It has three terms. Now it's not a coincidence that if we take the last two terms, 2 times negative 4, we get this last number here. So we're going to multiply those two terms, 2 times negative 4, to get the last number. Now if we add these two terms, 2 plus negative 4, it's going to give us this middle term. So if we add them, it's going to give us the middle term. If we multiply them, it's going to give us the last term. So let's look at this in reverse now. If we were to factor this trinomial, our result is going to look like two binomials multiplied together. So let's look at an example. x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now remember from the previous page, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us the last term and add to give us this middle term. So let's put on our thinking caps and try to think of two numbers that multiply to give us 8 and add to give us 6. Well, I know right off the bat that 4 times 2 is going to give me 8. So I'm going to test out 4 and 2. 4 times 2 gives me 8. 4 plus 2, does it give me 6? Yes, it does. So those are the two numbers that I was looking for, 4 and 2. We're going to write this as x plus 4, x plus 2. So there's my two binomials. Now if I multiply these together, I should get this trinomial. Let's try it x plus 4 times x plus 2. If I use the FOIL rule, I'm going to have the first ones are x times x, which is x squared. My outside terms is x times 2, which gives me 2x. My inside term is 4 times x, which is 4x. And my last two terms are 4 times 2, which gives me 8. If I collect these middle terms, I'm now going to have x squared, 2x plus 4x is like 2 oranges plus 4 oranges, which is 6 plus 8. Is that what I started with? x squared plus 6x plus 8? Yes, it is. So uh, my factoring was done correctly. So to factor the trinomial, x squared plus 6x plus 8 the result is two binomials multiplied together, and they are x plus 4, x plus 2. Let's look at another one. Now we need two numbers that multiply to give us the last term, but add to give us the middle term. Now we have to think of those two numbers. Well, I know 6 times 3 is 18, so 6 times 3. Now because this is a negative, I know that one of these numbers has to be a negative. So 
So let's try negative 6 and positive 3. Okay, if I multiply these together, negative 6 times positive 3, I'm going to get negative 18. So that works. When I add them together, I want them to equal negative 3. So negative 6 plus 3 is going to give me negative 3. So those were the correct numbers. I'm going to write this as x minus 6, x plus 3, because my numbers were minus 6 and plus 3. So there it is in factored form. If I were to check this, again I could expand using the FOIL rule. F stands for first, so x times x is x squared. O stands for outside, so I have 3 times x. I stands for inside, so I have negative 6x. And L stands for last. Negative 6 times positive 3 is negative 18. I'm going to collect those two middle terms and simplify to get 3x minus 6x is negative 3x minus 18. Now is that what I started with? Absolutely it is. So my factoring was done correctly. The next example is x squared minus 12x plus 36. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me the last term and add to give me the middle term. So the two numbers that come to my mind that multiply to give us 36 are 12 and 3. They multiply to give us a positive, so I know either they're both positive or they're both negative. Now I see they add to give us a negative, so it's not possible that they're both positive. They, that would never add up to a negative, so they must be both negative. Now let's try these numbers. Negative 12 times negative 3 is indeed positive 36. Negative 12 plus negative 3, however, gives us negative 15. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for negative 12. So these are not the numbers. If the numbers aren't 12 and 3 to multiply to give us 36, we need to think of two other numbers that multiply to give us 36. So let's try 9 and 4. Again, they both have to be negative because they add to a negative but multiply to a positive. So let's try these numbers out. Negative 9 times negative 4 is 36. That's correct. Negative 9 plus negative 4, however, is negative 13. I'm looking for negative 12. So again, those are the wrong numbers. There must be something else. Let's see. What other two numbers multiply to give us 36? Well, I know 6 and 6 too. So, negative 6 times negative 6 does give us positive 36. Negative 6 plus negative 6 does give us negative 12. So these are in fact our two numbers we were looking for. When we write it, this out as two factors, it's going to be x minus 6 and x minus 6. If we were to check these, x minus 6 multiplied by x minus 6. We're going to use the FOIL rule. So the first two terms is x squared. The outside is negative 6x. Our inside is negative 6x. And our last is positive 36. We're going to collect those two middle terms to give us a final answer of x squared minus 12x plus 36. Is this what we started with? Yes, it is. So our factoring was done correctly. This last one looks a little bit different. There's a constant value in front of that x squared. We've never seen that before. Let's just go ahead and take that out to make our lives a little bit easier. If we take it out, we're going to put everything else inside the bracket, but we need to take a 2 out of each term. So if we take a 2 out of 2x squared, we're just going to divide it by 2 to give us x squared. If we take 16x and divide it by 2, we're going to be left with 8x. 
And if we take negative 18 divided by 2, we're left with negative 9. Now it looks like something we're more familiar with, starting with an x squared. So when we find our two factors, it's going to look something like this. Okay. Just like the previous examples, we're going to need two numbers that multiply to give us the last term and add to give us the middle term. So we need two numbers that multiply to give us negative 9 and add to give us 8. Okay, so two factors of negative 9 I know are 3 and 3. Now one of them has to be a negative because they multiply to give us a negative. So let's do that one. Now 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 3 plus negative 3, however, is going to give us 0. We're looking for 8. So these two numbers are not going to work. Let's see if we can think of two other numbers that multiply to give us negative 9. The only ones I can think of are 9 and 1. Now one of these is going to have to be a negative and one of them is going to be a positive. If I check with this number here, I see it's a positive 8. So I need to keep the positive with my highest number. Let's check. 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. 9 plus negative 1 is 8. So these are the numbers we're looking for. When we write them in these brackets, it's going to be x plus 9, x minus 1. So the factored form of 2x squared plus 16x minus 18 is 2 bracket x plus 9 bracket x minus 1. Let's check this. 2 x plus 9 x minus 1. If we were going to FOIL the two binomials, we're going to have our first terms, x times x is x squared. Our outside terms, which is x times negative 1. Our inside terms, which is 9 times x. And our last terms, which is 9 times negative 1. If we collect like terms, we're going to collect these two in the middle. We're left with x squared minus x plus 9x give us 8x minus 9. Now we need to multiply everything by 2 to drop that bracket. This is the distributive law. So 8x times 2 is 16x, and negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. Is this what we started with? If we look way up here, yes it is. So we have factored this correctly. And that is the basis of factoring trinomials. So the main point to remember is that you're always looking for two numbers that multiply to give us the last term and add to give you the middle term.